Now I can we can start. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we're here to to present a little bit uh, Cabo Verde market. Okay, we have here with us uh, Mr. Jose Almada Diaz from uh, president from uh, Trade Invest of Cabo Verde. And I will start this session just with a brief introduction about the project, uh, Green and Small Smart Cities, that uh, from with this project, we are uh, meeting some of the countries uh, that we are targeting. And one of them is Cabo Verde. That's why we're here today. So the project Green and Small Smart City um, is led by Solartis. Solartis, I'm, the, I'm Claire Santa Maria, the cluster manager of Solartis. And Solartis is an Spanish solar energy cluster that has the objective of uh, improving the competitiveness of companies working in the, in the solar energy cluster. Okay. Solartis depends of a, a big ecosystem of associations of clusters uh, that has also a cluster from uh, energy storage, another one of lighting, another one of smart technologies that it's called the smart tech. And our objectives are in promoting the knowledge and benefits of self consumption, sustainable construction, boosting innovation and collaborative projects, and promoting energy communities. The Green and Small Smart Cities project is a go international project funded by, by the European Commission. And its objective is to spread the use of sustainable technological solutions from Europe to less developed countries in the world, supporting the internationalizations of uh, our SMEs uh, with cutting edge solutions, complementary technologies, and a shared vision of making a better world. The main goals of the project is focused on improvement of less developed regions, development of the concept green, a small and a smart city that we will explain later on, help the SMEs on their internationalization strategies and facilitating cross-border and complementary cooperation among water, ICT, energy, and nanotechnology sectors that are the different clusters involved in this project. The consortium members uh, it's as I told you, Solarti. That's it's leading the um, it's leading the project. It's from from Spain, and it's focused on solar energy. The Catalan Water Partnership, that it's a, a cluster of water uh, in Catalonia. Green Tech, that it's a cluster of energy and green technologies in Italy. Masovia Cluster ICT, that it's a cluster of ICT in Poland, and finally, nano progress and that it's focused on nanotechnology, that it's from Czech Republic. So uh, why do we talk about, with, where does the concept of green and small smart city comes from? Uh, what we focus on a smart city, which are the, the key fields, are innovation, entrepreneurship, and the generation of economic activity the knowledge and talent, and digital society and economy, okay? And the definition where the project uh, focuses on, green technology, is the development and application of products, equipment, and systems used to, to conserve the natural environment and resources, which minimize and reduce the negative impact of human activities, okay? So for us, it's very important to have in mind this definition so we can... Um, the focus uh, in this definition on the project and to improve these challenges. And why small cities? Because more than 30% of the world population lives in cities of less than 1 million people, and more than 44% of the population lives in rural, rural areas, but by 2030, the number of cities, which more than five 100,000 inhabitants is expected to increase 50% in Africa okay, and Asia. Asia and Africa and Latin America will face a significant increase in number of inhabitants migrating from rural areas to new emerging cities. So the focus in small cities for us, it's very interesting because um, usually smart cities have been focusing on very big cities. Okay, and we want to promote this concept in, in the smaller ones. What have we done 
for the project until the moment. We have. Um, Sorry, but I think the slides are not um, being oh. the shared in the screen of the session. So. Okay. You are not seeing the slides. Okay. Yeah, I'm yes. seeing the slides, but they are not passing. It's, all, it's the same same one. Okay, Maybe just so click because I'm I'm seeing the. Right. I'm going to do it again. It's working now. Yes, yes, are you sure? It's in the what we what have we done? Okay. Try um pasta one next one. Yes, it's working. Yes, it's working. Okay. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, but we will we will pass it later on the presentation so you will see the other slides that that I was talking about. And what have what have we done? We have uh, done a joint communication and marketing strategy, a catalog of products and services, and a market research to pre-select the countries that we are targeting for. That it's Cabo Verde, Vietnam, and Chile. And to do this pre-selection, we have done SME surveys. Okay, and some analysis of the market research analysis to decide which countries to go for. Okay, uh, then we have done some virtual working missions, the internationalization strategy, and an implementation roadmap to be able to implement all this strategy. And which are the expected results? So we have uh, several expected results. One is the establishment of an European strategic cluster partnerships in the industry related to the green technologies and ICT sectors applied to small cities. Then provide a better understanding of the most effective ways to improve cross-sectoral collaboration between clusters at an European level in order to develop and commercialize frontline innovations internationally. Then uh, the selection of three countries, that is the ones that we have selected and I, I said before, um, the elaboration of nine memorandum of understanding signed between the consortium and affiliated entities and other third partners, and uh, and at, at the end, and but mainly the the most important and why we're doing this project, it's to um, have a directly or indirectly benefit SMEs that belongs to our clusters. Okay, the indicator that we have is at least fifty SMEs having been benefited from the project. And why, why Cabo Verde? Okay, um, to select the, the country, what we did is to analyze the market, okay, with several indicators related to GDP, uh, democracy index, um, um, a lot of all the indicators that you see here, okay, the ease of doing business, et cetera, and also the interest of the uh, members of the consortium, the cluster consortium, to go to the different countries here in, in Africa that are the ones in the table. Uh, from this, um, we extracted an score, and with this score, we selected five. Okay, and with these five uh, countries we selected, what it, we did is to de do a survey, a questionnaire to our members, so they could um, express their interest in participating in explorative missions and knowing more about this this market and the one with more votes was Cabo Verde so that's why we decided Cabo Verde we traveled to Cabo Verde and now we're doing this webinar and just a very brief uh, introduction because about the selection of Cabo Verde or, or the analysis is that from the nine islands in Cabo Verde we decided to concentrate on Santiago view its uh, high GDP Santiago is divided in nine municipalities, from which we decided on Praia, as it is the most inhabited, with uh, 130,000 inhabitants. And while well, Praia uh, it's a, has a small dimension, and, but it's combined with the rapid growth uh, and increased urbanization that has led to traffic congestion and pollution, raising a variety of technical, social, economical, 
and organizational problems that tend to compromise the economic and environmental sustainability of the sick. This is a chart of the organization from 2009 to 2019. And well, a quick recap of the partners of the project that I explained before, but you were not seeing the, the slides, I think. Okay. So from Polonia, Czech Republic, Italy, and Spain. And that's all. Now, now I will pass the word for Mr. Jose Almada Diaz, that, as I said, he's the president of Trade Invest in Cabo Verde, and he will explain, uh, explain how is the market there and what are the possibilities of business, doing business in Cabo Verde for the European companies. So thank you very much, Jose. The word is yours. You can share your screen. OK. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Uh, good morning again. To, and uh, first of all, let's uh, thank you for have choose Cabo Verde, my country, to 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 bring this very interesting project. So I will now uh, share my presentation. Are you seeing it? This is a bit slow for myself. I, I see my screen. I can hear you. No, we are not. We are not seeing it. Now, now it's perfect. Thank you, no, Jose. Now it's perfect. Okay, so I will try to to talk a bit about the business environment and investment overview in Cabo Verde. Uh, very young country. As you may know, Cabo Verde has got independence from Portugal uh, only in 1975. So we are a very young country, a young democracy. Fortunately, we have a democracy that works. So we have uh, <clears throat> a relationship with the European Union for many reasons, for historical reasons, cultural reasons. We are maybe the first mixed uh, people in the world. Let's say after the discoveries, uh, the population is uh, half, let's say half European, half African. So we are a mix. The, yeah, maybe the, the, the first country of the new world, uh, what happened after in the Caribbean, in Brazil, in South America, in North America starts in Cabo Verde. So, uh, but on the on the business side, we have a very uh, we have this um, this uh, attachment to our uh, currency is the escudos like it was in Portugal before, but is has a peg a fixed uh, re exchange rate with the with the the euro, which is, which is very good for business, especially for foreign investors. So the location of the country, as we can see, is very interesting uh, in the mid-Atlantic. So linking, it's very quick to go to the four continents that in the Atlantic from Cabo Verde. We have four international airports, uh, nine ports. We have, a, let's say, a very good infrastructure in terms of uh, roads, ports, uh, etc., compared to the mainland, the countries in mainland Africa. So it, it's it's easy to access nowadays with flights from, from not only several capitals in Europe, but from the United States, from Africa, and even from Brazil. Uh, this was the scenario before the pandemic, now it's recovering. So from Cabo Verde, it's easy to access all four continents in, uh, in the Atlantic. We are fortunately a country that has political, economical, and social stability, good governments. We are one of the best in the, our continent. Uh, our society is open and tolerant. Like I said, it's a mixed uh, society, so everybody feels here at home. We are a Christian country, although we are very tolerant to other religions. Uh, the islands are very diverse. Uh, and the landscape can vary uh, from uh, very flat and uh, desert islands like Salbo, Vist, and Mayo, with a, lot, uh, with a lot of sandy beach, to other islands that are more volcanic and uh, high mountains. So 
people that know Canary Islands, when they come to Cabo Verde, they feel, uh, let's say, at home because it's very, the landscape is very close. The only thing is the difference in terms of development. We have access to a lot of markets. Uh, we have the Agoa uh, system that allows products that are made in Cabo Verde to enter the uh, United States without paying taxes. We have also the same thing with the, 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 the ECOWAS, which are the, the, the countries of West Coast of Africa, and also some uh, privileged uh, relationship with the European Union. So uh, companies that establish in Cabo Verde can export to these markets uh, in a very, very interesting conditions. Um, to look at the investment, how is the investment climate in Cabo Verde? Let's say we ha have been, uh, despite the, the, the pandemic, we, had, we have been experienced the best years in our history. If you look at the, the graph that is in the, in the screen, you can see that we uh, now in 2000, uh, we, the, the investments are climbing. I'm talking about the the new approved investments uh, with contracts with the government. So uh, we went from some dozens to hundreds million euros per year until 2018. And, uh, and, uh, and then in 2020, during the pandemic, we, we, we beat that record going above one, one billion euros. Uh, 2021 was even better. And we expect this year 2022 to exceed 2 billion euros of new approved investments, which is a very high number compared to our, uh, the size of our economy. Um, what, some of the reasons that uh, to understand what's going on, it's uh, tourism is still the biggest uh, sector. The majority of new approved investments are from the uh, tourism sector. And there's a, a change, uh, a paradigm change. We have been until now approved all, all only hotel uh, projects. Now we have uh, new uh, resorts with golf courses, uh, more complex and more and bigger projects. Uh, some uh, top brands like Hilton, Marriott, uh, Le Meridien, Golden Tulip, Hudson Blue are coming, and uh, this means also more investment per room. So there's are some, some reasons to explain this very, this very, let's say the interesting situation of the investment climbing uh, uh, despite the pandemic. Uh, as you can see, tourism is uh, compared 20 and 21, you can see that tourism is still uh, the, the ma major, uh, major sector. In 2020, we had one big project uh, uh, in industry, uh, which is a Norwegian project that is it's going to produce aqua, uh, tuna, bluefin tuna in aquaculture. But usually tourism dominates the, the, the let's say, the, the scenario of new investments in Cabo Verde. We have a, a strategic, uh, an agenda of strategic sector that goes from to diversify the economy. We are very happy with the new investments in tourism but we don't want to rely only on tourism. Although tourism is a sector that can, let's say, leverage the majority of the economy, but we want to try to, to diversify our economy with the projects in blue economy. Uh, I will explain a bit more uh, uh, in the next, uh, in this slide, for example. In the blue economy, we, uh, we, uh, the, the, the government of Cabo Verde is now creating special economic zones. And the first one is a maritime one, is in the island of San Vicente and has all these opportunities, uh, the container transshipment, uh, fishing terminals, international ship register, shipbuilding, bunkering, uh, LNG bunkering, for example, uh, aquaculture. So there's a lot of opportunities in the blue economy in Cabo Verde, and we are very happy to see that. Some companies are already looking at Cabo Verde to, to develop some, some business in this sector. Uh, I'm highlighting here the, the, special economic, the first special economic zone in the country, like I said, in the island of San Vicente. 
which will be an area, a considerable area dedicated to build new shipyards, uh, fish, fish processing industry, etc. new port, and this uh, aquaculture uh, done by the Nortuna company, which is from, from Norway. In fact, they have been doing research for 10 years in south of Spain before coming here. And they are the only company that has the technology of producing bluefin tuna in aquaculture, the full cycle. So they are expecting to start uh, next month uh, in June. And uh, the forecast when they, at the cruise speed will be 200,000 tons per year an annual export forecast of 6 billion euros, which is three times the GDP of the entire country. So you can imagine the impact that this project can have in Cabo Verde. Uh, the digital economy also is, of course, uh, one of the areas that the government is very keen to develop. We are building a technological park in Praia, precisely the city that we choose. Uh, and also with a nice station in Mindelo. So we want to attract companies we, that uh, work on the, this area with producing software to export, call centers, etc. Training centers, startup incubators, attraction of digital nomads. So this is uh, uh, an area of future for, for a country that has a very young population that learn very fast. Uh, Agribusiness is another a sector we want to develop. Uh, we want to, do, to have a, a more modernization of the agriculture using desalinated water. So there's already some investment going, going on with this project called Aquasan. Uh, the idea is to produce uh, high, uh, high added value products to export to the, not only to the hotel industry, but even to export outside the country. Renewable energy has been until now, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, doing very successful in the country. We have a lot, I think we have the, 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 no, it's true. We have the highest penetration of renewable energy in the whole African continent with the windmills and solar parks. Now we are uh, trying other projects with the uh, trying to bring energy from the, the waves of the sea. Uh, the financial sector, we want also to be a financial sector close to, to the continent of Africa, like the Mauritius is doing in the other side of Africa. So the idea is to attract uh, financial instruments and companies to, to settle in Cabo Verde. Uh, there's new business opportunities in the tourism sector, like I said. We want to diversify our tourism until now is more hotel and all inclusive special all inclusive hotels so we want to attract to other islands a high-end tourism bringing some luxury brands we end with some full integrated resorts that can combine uh, hotels with res residential tourism special with the, with the focus on health tourism other areas uh, meetings and congress sorry uh, and also some, we have some anchors to diversify our, our tourism. Until now it's more uh, sun and beach, but we want to, to, to attract, uh, we have some towns with a lot of cultural events, uh, like, uh, like in Mindelo and other towns that can attract uh, uh, urban and cultural tourism. This is Cesare Ever, our queen. We have a very interesting carnival, Rio de Janeiro style with uh, more than 100 years of tradition. Uh, music, of course, is one of the biggest exports of the country. We have a lot of music festivals, and uh, we want to take advantage of this also. Uh, like I said, the residential health and wellness is a, a priority. We want to attract uh, uh, retired people, this niche of retired people from Europe or from uh, other places to come to Cabo Verde and, and uh, this, because this is a growing market, there's a lot of business going on with this uh, segment. Uh, for that, we just created the green card, which is a program of incentives for people that come and buy houses, uh, second home houses, uh, second houses in Cabo Verde to spend their 
their uh, retirement or to work from here, uh, etc. So it's not that is it's, it's compared with to other countries is very cheap. So depending on the municipality, if the municipality we choose to buy a house has a GDP below the national average, a house of 80,000 euros will be enough to have the green card. If that GDP, for example, in Praia, Sal, Mindela, the place that are above the national GDP has to be at least 120,000 euros investment in order to get to have the green card, which gives you the permanent residence and some incentives. So this is a program that is a new, a new one is putting in place now. We have other uh, um, anchors like the nautical sports. As you may know, we are going to receive the Volvo Ocean Race for the first time. There's only two countries in Africa where the Volvo Ocean Race will call is Cabo Verde in, the, in San Vicente Island and, and in South Africa. Uh, it has been delayed because of the pandemic, but uh, I think they will arrive now in uh, in the in January next year. We have a lot of opportunities in this nautical sports. Uh, I don't know what happened. It seems that it has blocked. Okay, golf also it's important. We are developing new uh, resort, like I said. Sorry, it's a bit slow. <laughs> okay. Also, the 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 sorry for this, the cruise tourism. Don't worry. Creation of turnaround ports. We already have a lot of cruise uh, vessels that call our ports, special Mindelo and Praia, but we we are going to to start of the first term, cruise terminal in Mindelo, in the Porto Grande Bay. And the idea is to, to, to become a, let's say, turnaround uh, port. So usually they pass through Lisbon, Madeira, Las Palmas, and then can be this day and take the plane back and others will come by plane and take the, the boat on the way back. Uh, this is an uh, image of the Porto Grande of San Vicente. So to close, let's talk about the investment incentives. Some, we have some fiscal uh, and, and, and some incentives and uh, starting with our international business center. This is a very a new scheme that started two years ago. So the, the companies that uh, to attract companies in, in the area of industry, uh, international uh, retail, international commercial, and also service. So they can be, uh, uh, they can install, the, if there's these companies that do international business, settle their headquarters in Cabo Verde, they will benefit from, uh, there's also some other opportunities, in international ship register, the park promotion uh, and management, I'm talking about logistics parks or industrial parks, they can be from private initiative, duty-free stores in the airports, in the ter cruise terminals, etc. So the advantage of the, this uh, scheme is that the, we will have a, a corporate tax, very, a very low corporate tax between two and a half to 5%, depending uh, for industrial and trade centers, depending on the number of qualified jobs the company creates. And for uh, international uh, service is two and a half for, for uh, two and a half percent. Uh, there are other general incentives for uh, for uh, foreign investors: uh, stamp duty exemption, exemption from custom duties and imports for investment. If you are building an hotel on a industry, you can have tax exemption, uh, duty uh, custom exemption property tax exemptions and uh, reduced uh, tax on the for non residents for people so there are some uh, interesting uh, uh, incentives for the projects that are very big uh, well I'm when I'm saying big it's uh, projects above 
above 27 million euros investment, the government can uh, sign a special uh, uh, contract with them. We call it a, a conventional establishment. It gives a lot of incentives, but also, uh, uh, let's say, investments below that, that uh, size that uh, quali create qualified jobs also can benefit from some similar uh, incentives. So this is our presentation. Thank you for, your, for to be patient to listen to me. And I will be available for any questions you may have. Okay, thank you very much, Jose. We really appreciate that you are here with us today. And well, uh, it's a pity that I couldn't travel with the project in, in March because I, I wasn't in the, in the organization. I, I recently incorporated two months ago, but I, I would really go, I would like to go to Cabo Verde after your presentation. So uh, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> in another occasion. Thank you, I, thank wanted you. To, I wanted to, to let you see, let you see the, the people that is here, okay? Because we have technical problems with the camera, but we are a lot of people. Ah, because of this. Vivian. Yeah, the image, the image is not so good, but I can notice that is the majority are women. <laughs> yes, now, now you will see better because we have like a... Okay. Yes, women, now women you will are in see charge in, the, in this world. <laughs> okay. Hello. I think all, all are women except Ivan. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. Also in Cabo Verde Trade Invest now, I think we have 70% women and only 30% men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, woman power. Um, yes. so, so, okay, so I think um, maybe if, if the ones that are listening online wants to do um, any question, please feel free to do it on the chat. We already have some, some questions, so, so I'm going to start. Uh, looking at them. Um, the first one would be from Ares Pellegri that she's saying regarding the business opportunities, which are the economical benefits that an European company can achieve establishing their business in Cabo Verde? Well, like uh, uh, I said, there are a lot of incentives. It depends on the sector, but usually. We, we have this uh, tax uh, custom uh, exemption from the equipment we can bring. And then depending on the sector, we can have these incentives on uh, corporate tax. Uh, at the same time, people companies are allowed to bring uh, foreign uh, employees, although we prefer that you hire local people, but that is not forbidden. People can, they, they, we can br bring expat, expatriate uh, employers. They are allowed to, to send back the, their, the, the remittance they want to do from their salary. And, uh, and there's no, there's no uh, barriers to the financial, financial barrier. The profits of the company also can be sent back to the country of origin. So in general terms, these are the, the incentives, you know. So customs, uh, exemption, and, uh, and uh, tax incentives, very low tax uh, system. When, okay. when you establish a convention of, uh, with the government, uh, these big projects, you can have completely exemption of corporate tax during the five first years, and then have 50% reduction in the 10 after. So 15, 15 years of tax incentives. Okay, very interesting. Thank you. I don't know if you could uh, stop uh, sharing the screen. Ah, I can. No, yes, you can okay. stop sharing the the presentation so we can see you bigger. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the next question would be, which are considered to be by Adriana Batalla, which are considered to be the most common trade and entry barriers that many foreign companies are facing when expanding their business to Cabo Verde? Sorry, I didn't get the, the question. Sorry. Which, which are the most uh, common trade and entry barriers that many foreign companies face 
when entering to Cabo Verde? Which are the main obstacles, the main difficulties that the companies face when entering the market? Well, in principle, there are no there are no barriers. Ah, that's there good. Are some, <laughs> there, there are some bureaucracy, uh, which we have. We are in, uh, improving the speed that of the let's say the of the the process of uh, we can, uh, in Cabo Verde, for example, you can we can establish a company in one day. <laughs> One day is enough to come and establish a, a new company. Well, it's, it's very fast. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, this is a new program you have and it's working. And uh, but depending on the size of the, the uh, depending on the size of the, the budget, uh, for example, uh, big projects like resorts that uh, needs a lot of land. Uh, this can take some months, the, the negotiation, the price, the location, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in principle, there are not no barriers. There's some bureaucracy that we want to speed up. Uh, the uh, language we are improving a lot in terms of English language, especially mm -hmm. the new generation. Language can be a barrier depending from where we are coming. We don't, but uh, a lot of people in Cabo Verde they speak Portuguese, French, and English, and uh, of course Spanish. Well, you can talk in Portuguese, <laughs> so you can understand, <laughs> understand each other. Right. And uh, so I don't see any barriers. It's an open country. We want to, in fact, we want to attract companies to come. Great. Thank you. Very good news. And... Uh, there are some things that are not allowed, like guns, production of guns. <laughs> well, that's good. Like that, but <laughs> that's, that's another thing. <laughs> Okay, and I don't know the people from here. If you want to make some question, yes, please. I think I'm not, we were going to see. Okay, yes. I have a question. What are the advantages of having a green card, or like a, a person who buys a property? Well, first of all, they have the residence, so they don't have to pay visa. They don't have to. Pay. They have permanent residence, so. Uh, uh, they, they are allowed to bring also a car. They don't pay. They don't pay tax, uh, municipality tax, because when you buy a house, usually you have a municipality tax of three percent of the price, so that we have that exemption. Uh, generally, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's these are the incentives. Mm -hmm. So you are allowed to bring a car without paying the duties. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And somebody wants to another question. Is there one in the chat? Okay. Which um, okay. Um Ivan is asking, thank you for the for your presentation. Which advice would you give for an European company that wants to establish in Cabo Verde for the first time? Welcome as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's, it's always good to, first of all, to contact us. We are the agency responsible. We are, let's say, the one-stop shop uh, of the government of Cabo Verde, so we don't have to deal with a lot of institutions. Uh, I will also recommend to have a local lawyer. There are very good ones uh, here. And uh, other than that, anything you want, Cabo Verde Trade Invest can try to indicate you if you want a, a local consultant to do studies. But uh, it's very easy to do business in Cabo Verde in principle. Yes, we have time. So, um, which European countries are the biggest investors so far? Uh, Portuguese and Spain, Portugal and Spain. Oh, okay. What about Italians? I think and, well, Italians were in the beginning. They still have a lot. There's still some hotels. In, in, it's interesting because they were Italians were one of the first ones to come and build hotels in, in Sal and also Bovista. But now uh, Spain has passed them with the Rio, the, the biggest investor in Cabo Verde in terms of. Uh, Hotels is the Rio, Rio Hotels from, from Spain. Also, the big exporter is Fresh Comar, 
represents 60% of exports of good is a company from Vigo, which exports mm. can, uh, can, tuna, can uh, tuna to Europe, to Spain, and uh, also to, uh, and they are looking to export to United States and other African countries. As I may know, there will be, a, 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 in principle, an open market in Africa. The agreement has been signed so it will take some 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 years, but uh, so in general terms, the the main investors are Portuguese companies and and Spanish. I think only from Canary Islands we have around seventy companies in Cabo Verde. <laughs> seventy, not seventeen. Yes. <laughs> wow. Uh, so they are the two biggest. Now they are, we are seeing other other investors coming. I said the Norwegians, for example. There are some Americans in the hotel industry also, and maybe in LNG bunkering, um, and also some a few from African continent, but they are very few until now. But the majority is from the Iberian, Iberian Peninsula. <laughs> yeah, and the, and the, and the hotel industry is like the main uh, main investment, right? Yes. Okay. okay. And the uh, Rios and Melias. Well, the Melias we have in Cabo Verde belong to a British investor, but the Rio, the Rio family, as you know, they are they own their own hotels. So is the biggest investor until now in hotel industry. Okay. Thank you. And Gabriela has a question. Hello, Mrs. Mr. Jose Almada. I would like to ask you, uh, it's known that um, Cape Verde is a very uh, good uh, country um, promoting the tourism, but a part of tourism, um, which sectors do you think the, um, the government should would, uh, invest in the future? Well, the government is very keen to to invest uh, in the to create an international uh, hub in the uh, Sal Island for uh, uh, air transport. You know, in fact, we start a, a partnership before the pandemic with Iceland Air at the time, and uh, but unfortunately came the pandemic and then the contract was stopped. So the idea is, is to try advantage of our location to turn the special the island of Sal in, 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 in like a small Dubai, let's say, <laughs> to be because of the location. We have this all this traffic coming from Latin America to Europe, and then also from the African continent to, to United States. Cabo, there are only five, five countries in Africa that are allowed to fly directly to the United States. Cabo Verde is one of them and has two airports from where Sal and Praia, from where companies can, can fly to United States. So uh, there's a big, huge market of Nigerians and other people that fly to United States, usually to Europe. So they can fly through Cabo Verde and have the stopover program. We started that before the pandemic and it was working very well. We are keen to restart it now. Well, the government just uh, reached an agreement with Vinci, uh, Vinci airports to a, a concession contract for the, to manage the, all the airports in the country, the nine airports. And there's a huge program of investment in that contract. So we, we believe that our, we can be very competitive in becoming a, a platform of transport distribution in the Atlantic. The same thing for the, the, the container transshipment uh, regarding to vessels to, to our location and bunkering. So the blue economy is expanding. I think fisheries also. We have a lot of agreements with Mauritania, with these countries nearby. So like Fresh Comari is doing, in fact, we have two Spanish companies that is doing that. It's Fresh Comari and Atunlu. Uh, that uh, they bring not only fish they catch that they buy here, but they buy in different places. We cannot hear you. Oh. 
se ha ido. A ver, sí. A ver si así se transmitiría el sonido por el HD. Se vuelve a conectar. In the right. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, we're going to try to connect again with the with Mr. Sorze and Maida. Try to connect. We don't know if he... Ah, okay, now he is coming back. <laughs> yes, okay. Hello, Jose. I don't know what happened. The, the connection. I'm sorry. The, something happening. Technology is not only on every time <laughs> hundred percent no, reliable. It's complicated. Also here as well. We, we are having today a lot of problems. I think it's because it's Friday, and I think everybody wants to go on <laughs> on the weekend. So um, I don't know if you were in the middle of saying something or I yes, think... I was. Uh, yeah. So the, the idea is to the country to become a platform of service, international service in the middle of Atlantic in several areas. We want to attract, like I said, companies that do international business, it can be commercial, can be industrial. We have here some, some uh, companies from mainly from Portugal industry that do some uh, garments, shoes to export, uh, and they are very successful. Some of them are here for more than 20 years. And uh, digital economy, and of course, smart cities is one of the one of the priorities uh, uh, for us. We want our cities to be attractive, to be sustainable. So uh, we welcome we welcome your project, the project that has presented in terms of uh, let's say turn our cities in in the sustainable and smart uh, cities. So in general terms, these are the, the the main areas. We want to diversify inside tourism, having a very more high added value tourism, medical tourism, some uh, high end tourism especially uh, the residential for second homes and also blue economy renewable energy digital economy okay thank you thank you very much Jose. and just to finish we have a few minutes we have another question in the chat from media thank you for the presentation it's very interesting my question is what are the means official or not to be to meet partners in cabo verde well, we have, uh, we can do it uh, through us, mm -hmm. Cabo Verde Trade Invest, through the Chamber of Commerce. Okay. We have three chambers of commerce. Cabo Verde is divided between Northern Island and Southern Islands. So there's a Chamber of Commerce for the Northern Islands called Barlavento Islands. And there's another one for the Southern Islands called Sotavento. And also there's a Chamber of Commerce dedicated to the tourism. So depending, but the other, the other two are general, are generalists. So people can contact the, the chambers of commerce through us. 
Okay. Or they can come, they, they come, come, they can come to Cabo Verde next month to the Cabo Verde Investment Forum, which Great. will happen 16, 17 June in the island in Sal Island in, at the Hilton Hotel, where will, that will be hosted by the Prime Minister and other members of the cabinet. And there will be two days of presentations, B2B meetings, etc. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. And well, we we will just finish in a few minutes. But I I, I also had another question as a cluster manager of uh, a solar energy cluster. Uh, I have a compulsory question that I had to do it to you. Specifically, when you uh, talk about renewable energies, um, which opportunities do you see for solar energy uh, in Cabo Verde? Uh, yes, we have uh, master, uh, the, the Minister of Energy and Industry, uh, they have developed a master plan. The idea is to have more solar parks uh, mm -hmm. in the future. We already have two or three in the country, uh, that, but that will be in a competitive basis. There will be some, some bids for that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I believe that uh, there's opportunity for, for companies that sell and install uh, solar uh, panels for houses, for uh, industries. A lot, of, a lot of people now is taking uh, conscience of the importance of the renewable energy. So I think there's a lot of opportunities to sell this kind of equipments uh, in Cabo Verde, to sell, install, and do the maintenance. Okay, thank you very much. And well, we are just in, in time. Uh, thank you very much for your participation again. It was a pleasure having you here today. And also because we know there's quite a, an hour uh, difference uh, in time. I don't know what time is there in, what time is in Cabo Verde? It's 10 in, 10 in the morning now. 10 in the morning, okay. So <laughs> you're just beginning the day. So yes. have a good weekend. And thank you very much for uh, the part of everything. Uh, I, everybody here. And bye bye. And we are nice keeping in contact uh, with you for the project. Okay. Thank you, okay. Thank you very much. So much. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Buen fin de semana. Gracias. Obrigada. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Gracias.